But why don't we move into our last wide receiver of the day, who Skyler so expertly and professionally mentioned earlier, Romeo Dobbs, whose startup ADP for DLF was wide receiver 53, which was honestly, for going to September, was a little bit higher than I even expected. But, you know, the hype was pretty strong. Preseason hype is a hell of a drug. We've got his first really good taste of him uh, this past week with kind of his, I would say, his breakout game. Eight receptions, just under 80 yards, got a touchdown. Um He's leading the Packers in targets now because of it. He's got 16 targets on the year. It's not that much, but that wide receiver room is like that. It's it's there for the taking. It's kind of being spread out about the, around this time. Uh, he's got a 16% target share so far. Not great, but again, like this can grow because of that wide receiver room that's there for the Packers. And Dubes is someone that we kind of had to take on in preseason of, you know, these day three wide receivers. It's just a good process to move on from them to, for a profit when you can get it especially the, I should say specifically the ones who go late in rookie drafts as well. Cause it's kind of like late in the NFL draft, late in your rookie draft, like the, the, the chance of them hitting is just not very good to so take the profit when you get it. But I was also saying at the same time, Hey, if you feel really strong about Romeo dopes, I, I don't know there's a, there is definitely the, the, the clan behind him on that. Hey, hold on, see what you get. And we're now getting it. Uh, Matt, where were you on dubs through this, throughout all this? Well, I mean, I'll start with coming into the, the rookie draft. I did think he was kind of a, an interesting um, wide receiver prospect. He had, you know, he was slightly above all the regression lines for his age of production because he was a four-year senior. So he didn't look terrible analytically. He had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons, uh, over 24% of Nevada's targets. I think he was legitimately the reason that Carson Strong looked good at all. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, like I, I kind of felt pretty high on the kid, but then he took that Terrace Marshall avenue of preseason hype where you watched him jump a hundred spots in ADP essentially. Um, and you know, what like you were saying in the wide receiver 50 range. Um, so for me, that's always a position that I'm looking to cash out on guys with lower hit rates and guys that just don't have insulated value. And I think we can use somebody that we talked about earlier as an example. Darnell Mooney had a very respectable rookie season, uh, and a really good sophomore jump and we were excited about his target share was top 11 he was top 11 in total targets as well wide receiver 27 in points per game like that's a decent sophomore bump from your rookie season and then because he doesn't have a super strong collegiate profile to fall back on and because people didn't invest a lot into him um we've watched that value kind of just leak like a sieve because he doesn't have the insulation um Dubs was, in, or I, I can't say inevitably, but somebody was inevitably going to step up in this Packers offense, especially with all the injuries. And yes, you don't have to look at va- vacated targets at all or, or believe in any of that, but it was just, there's nobody on that team. It's absolute dearth of receiving talent for the Packers, and you have a Hall of Fame receiver at quarterback. So one of those rookies was going to take a sizable leap in value just because they're seeing targets from Aaron Rodgers, and he throws one of the more valuable passes in the league, like his yards per target points per target delivered all of that is has always been among the tops so with that kind of all encapsulated i don't think dobbs is somebody that you should be super high on investing in moving forward i don't think that his role within an offense in a you know near 40 year old quarterback is going to be super insulated for years to come i think eventually the packers are going to have to get younger and move on from rogers um and a player like that like he needs antonio brown deontay johnson like guys really need to have that type of career arc to be able to maintain that value consistently. And even a guy like Deontay Johnson, another great example who you can kind of comp Mooney to lightly is look at what happens when his offense got a little worse, his value just disappeared. And now if you were invested in and are looking for a higher bump in production, it's hard to get that return back. Yep. Yeah. Those are uh, perfect. I love the comparisons that you've made too, because yeah, Deontay Johnson's like, how much does this guy have to do on the field for him to get some respect? Because it seems like he never does. And no, he's always like undervalued every time. Skyler, what are you feeling here? Yeah, I mean, as someone who's spent 90% of my time on Twitter for over the last three years defending Deontay Johnson, uh, I, I agree with the take. Um, you know, I wouldn't have him higher than that 56 price even now to be honest, just everything we said about Mooney, Mooney's rookie year, especially going into the the second year when he originally picked up that value, like I was selling him for, a, you know, a second, or if I could use him in a second to get a first, I was doing that every single time. Um, even though Mooney ended up being more 
of a guy who stuck out after the fact and had his climb, I was still okay with that as a process type move. And that's where I sat out with Romeo Dobbs. Just like coming in to this offseason when he took the jump, if you had him on your team where you early in the process could have gotten him for a rookie fourth, then he climbed into the third. And if you could cash out for a second, I'm, I'm doing it every single time. If he ends up being more of a player, I'm completely okay with that. Um, you know, another player who doesn't have, who's maybe in a, you know, murky offense, um, who gets a good part of his team target share, who doesn't have any investment rooms like a Jacoby Myers. And that's just another player where he probably gives you similar things in your lineup. He's going to be a cheaper option than Romeo Dobbs. And, you know, he also, I think is just limited with where he can be in the market. Um, Romeo Dubs kind of jumps into the same tier in the market as a guy like Christian Watson. It's important to note that Sammy Watkins went in IR. Christian Watson wasn't available in this game. Alan Lazard is like, even albeit he got a touchdown, he's still kind of getting worked into this team more. And, you know, credit to Dubs to step up. You, you know, our targets are earned, but it is um, a lesser situation. And if you could turn, you know, a game like his where he was eight for eight, incredibly efficient into even Christian Watson, a player I wasn't really into early in the process, I would, I would pivot off him for that. Or honestly, I'd still rather have David Bell and with how s- slow of a start David Bell has had, um, that's, I think that's a transition or, you know, a parallel jump you could make in market. I think somebody would take you Dobbs. get plus on, on Bell right now. And I would absolutely, yep. I mean, give me Bell on a third for Dobbs. That's a home run trade in my opinion. Um, as I said, if you can get straight swap for Christian Watson or even I'd put, I'd put a third or a fourth on top of Dobbs for Watson. And I'm not particularly high on Watson, but I think with everything that you were saying about the insulated value and people having, you know, being invested in players. And then of course the draft capital and all of those things, Christian Watson is a slightly safer asset, you know, where I think he will stay worth around a second, even for another year where, you know, if Dobbs has a month where he falls off, it's done. He's worth nothing, goes to nothing. So when we're just looking at what, what assets have more insulated value, I'm, 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 I'm all for making that jump. Yeah, that's that's the thing. There's just so much working against him to retain or gain the value that you want for him, even if he's performing. Like like as Matt was saying, you know, these these later prospects, they have to produce over and over and over and at a high level to actually start to gain real value. And even then, it doesn't really meet what they're doing on the field in the case of Deontay Johnson. So it's just tough. He's already an outlier and you're betting on him doing it at the highest level, you know, that all these other outliers, like the, the, of the few outliers that exist to actually get them where you want them to be. It's tough. It's tough to invest in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in that avenue too, like you can certainly add things to Dobbs. Like I even, I liked the David Bell idea. Like, and, and there's, there's a lot of different ways. And I mean, there's, I wouldn't have a problem with holding on to him either. It's just, you have to look at the cost of investment. And I know people are like, after drafts doesn't matter, but it does. It, it really does because you, you know, it's kind of about building an investment portfolio with players. And as we were talking about off, off air wide, it's like, you got to stop looking at them as individual players and individual performances and look at them as kind of like stable assets um, and, and ways that you can improve your own value of your roster whether it be through production or future insulated value with picks. So I think any time that a player like Dobbs has this value spike, it whether or not he maintains value above what you got, it is the right process to move on and, and gain more back. Yeah, to what you were saying about the price you buy in not mattering, that is a completely redraft mindset because in the dynasty 100%. world, it 100% matters where people in your league went in. If you go through your startup draft and – a guy fell five rounds, his value in your league is less just inherently, you know, the yes. insulated value in these things 100%. that go into these players, it really does matter where his last price point was set within the league. It hundred percent matters in redraft. It doesn't matter at all. Whoever's giving you points. It's a, what, what have you done for me lately world in the dynasty world? It's just like real life where if you are going and investing in certain things, there's, there is a sunk cost, you know, perception as well as just, where you allocate your assets, how you build your portfolio and where you're, you know, the price points you're willing to just sell and give up on an asset or 
you know, what, what losses you're willing to take. It, it's completely built into it. And the price does matter. If Romeo Dobbs was, if you got him the fourth round of your rookie draft and you say, maybe I hit gold, maybe I struck gold. I want to stay here. Sure. I don't hate you staying. I mean, I would pivot for a second, but you can hold and just see what happens. But if you came in and invested um, a second round, a late second round pick to take him in your rookie draft, and you can cash out now for a more stable asset, that's either a you know a better second or a player in that territory. I, I I almost feel like you have to do it because you took that risk on him and you just need to take the W when you got the W. Yes, completely agree. I mean, I'll say everybody, we all have our players that we just love and you know, you just want you want it, they you want them on your team. Hey, if that's Romeo Dubes for you, good for you. I hope for the best for him, you know, always want the best for these players. This is just a process thing for us that we like to try and stress in general to help you improve your rosters and the assets on your team.